almost a year ago, we asked Iconix if we could check out a few of their keyboards, and you know what? It took a while, but at long last, they have arrived. The Iconix ZX75 is here. We got two of them. Uh, I also don't know if I'm pronouncing Iconix right. Kind of sounds like Articuno to me. Take that as you will. This one says Dark Side on it, so it's probably black or dark blue, and it is indeed the black version, as you can see here. Uh, it's a TTC Ace key switch. I am not familiar with them, uh, but it looks nice. And it's got RGB. And this one is, uh, oh, it's green. Very cool. This one's also got a TTC gold pink. Looks very pretty. I'm actually really excited for this. Um, it's a plastic board and it's got a bit of a hefty price tag that we'll get into later, but I think the design is really cool and also it's wireless. So if you need a wireless keyboard, you're just gonna end up paying more money. ZX75, what's in here? A little envelope with some quick start stuff. It's mostly in what looks like simplified Chinese, but I am not sure. Oh, the back is English. Okay, that's cool. Uh, yeah, cool. It's just got a bunch of like indicator light status stuff, how to do with the wireless things. You can do 2.4 gigahertz or Bluetooth, which is very handy. Uh, if you're doing the 2.4 gigahertz, it stays at the 1000 hertz polling rate that you'll get if you plug it in directly. But if you do Bluetooth, it's down to 125. Totally fine for like typing, but you probably don't want to game on this thing if it's in Bluetooth. Let's take a look at it. It's got some cool keycaps on it that I can see through this little plastic case. This is a really tight fit though. They could have gone with a slightly larger, slightly larger plastic sleeve. Oh, underneath, actually, yeah, sorry. I mean, you guys can see this here, but I'm gonna check out what's underneath. We got a cable. Like other keyboards we've checked out, it doesn't have a sleeve cable. It's just a regular old USB-C to A. Uh, could be a little nicer. Um, I know that this guy is more expensive than some of the other boards we've looked at. So, you know, higher expectations, but that's all right. We've also got a bunch of extra keycaps. Little option. Oh, it's the Mac stuff. Okay, so this one is also another Mac, uh, easily adjusted to Mac keyboard. I don't use Apple products. It's not for me, but I like that there's an option for people. We've also got a switch puller and a keycap puller. Uh, we've also got the USB dongle. Ah, get out of there, dongle. As if you want to do Bluetooth. It's USB A to C. Uh, so if you only have C ports, which is great for a lot of laptops, you can still use this. And then on top of that, we've got this little, oh, it's a brush, what? Okay, I have not had a keyboard come with a brush yet. They get extra points for this. This is awesome. I would love a little brush to just like wipe the cat hair and stuff off of my keyboard and out from the keycaps. I wanna keep this, I don't care. We got two of these. I'm putting this one in my pocket before I leave. Now the keyboard. This thing is actually surprisingly hefty for a plastic case. Uh, let's give it away actually before I do anything else. 1.15 kilograms. So that's not super hefty, uh, about not quite three pounds. It's pretty cool though. And I actually really do like it. It's really grippy on the bottom here. It's a textured, plastic and it's all see-through as well. Oh, which is super cool. Uh, I think my only complaint so far, I haven't even typed on this or anything, so I don't know how it feels, but my only complaint is that, especially with it being see-through, it would have been really nice to have like a uh, silicone layer or something on the bottom or some foam. I've got, for reference, I've got a Portico 75 and that one is a similar plastic case like this, but it comes with a big silicone pad on the very bottom and that really helps deaden the sound. So we'll see how this one is. I'm gonna open the black one and take a look at that. Just to take a quick look-see. I'm so excited. I've actually been waiting for these for like a pretty long time. They caught my eye on their website and you know, I just thought they looked neat. They've got this really kind of retro design. I don't know if this is an actual speaker or not, but it looks like a little speaker port. Uh, it's got a plastic knob on it. Nice and tactile, I like the sound of it too. Oh, these switches feel good too. These are just linear. The space bar could sound a little better. It's a little hollow. But overall, I actually really like how it sounds. And uh, you're getting 81 keys. It's basically, it's a 75%. So you're getting your F row still, which is really nice for a lot of people. Uh, and then like delete, insert, home, end, and then some arrow keys. Let's check out the green one though, because what I'm really excited about is these keycaps. They've got this really cool Camp Life keycap set. It's got Camp Life there, you know, it's like a moon. It's all green. There's a little camp symbol up there. West, east, north, and south directional buttons. That's great. And then they've got really cute, um, optional keycaps for the side here for like delete and insert and, and whatnot. They got a little campfire and a backpack and a tent and then I guess a compass or something. I don't know. I just think it's a cute keycap set. I kind of want this too. Uh, I 
Cool. I like these switches more. The space bar could be improved on this one as well. Um, I don't know anything about the stabilizers in here. They're, I'm not sure if they're clip-on or screw-in, and I can't quite see them. So they might be clip-on. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. It's just really hard to see through this board. Either way, they sound pretty good. These are definitely better than a lot of like manufacturers that you'd get, like Corsair or Logitech or something. And the space bar can be improved. It's not rattly, it's just a little hollow. So you could put some foam in there or something and it would really bump it up. Oh, one other really interesting thing to talk about is that these are KDA profile keycaps, which I'm really not familiar with at all. I've never typed on KDA. I like SA, I like SDA, I like XDA, but yeah, I've never tried KDA and I'm not sure. It just kind of looks like a slightly lower version of SA. I'm not, I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. Uh, but it looks cool, and you know what? Yeah, it feels okay to type on, kind of digging it. One pretty cool thing that I just noticed is the knob is like, this is beefy. I don't, the push down is just crazy. I've never had this tactile of a, of a push down on a knob before, and I'm kind of digging it. I like how it's really hollowed out in the center too, like, you're not gonna miss that. Bam, I'm doing it. Then on the back of the board, we've got adjustable feet, whoa! Those are just magnets, okay. So do you like reverse these or something? How do these work? Okay, so they're just like magnets that go in like this normally to store it away or whatever, or to have it flat. And then if you want a little bit more of an angle, you flip them backwards and they've got the feet there. How well does it stay? Actually stays okay. It's not great because it's plastic on plastic and it's mostly using the magnet to hold it in place. There's definitely like some slippage on the right here and it's not the keyboard slipping on the mat. It's the feet slipping in the receptacle that they've got. So I don't know, beware of that. If you want a higher typing angle, then this might not be for you. What else? It's got a 6,000 milliamp hour battery for all the wireless charging that you want. Looks like there's two of them, one here, one here. Uh, and then it's got an on off switch right here between cabled and wireless. Other than that, it looks pretty standard, really easy to take apart. It looks like you just take apart a bunch of screws here and here and here, lift the top off, maybe take a few more off of the PCB and plate and whatnot, and then it'll come all right apart. Yeah, I guess that's my only complaint so far is that I really wish they'd done anything on the bottom, just like a, a silicone layer or, I mean, you could tape it yourself and it would probably fix it, but that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna plug this guy in. I'm gonna test it out. I really wish this thing came with a green cable. It really would have amped it up. Uh, but we're not gonna check it out before we talk about our sponsor, Secret Lab. Thanks to Secret Lab for sponsoring today's video. Secret Lab chairs are engineered to keep you incredibly comfortable for long hours at work and play. Their new Titan Evo 2022 chair keeps you feeling comfortable for longer. Four-way lumbar support, ultra comfortable line of different seat material, and more. All chairs come with up to a five year extended warranty and a 49 day return policy. Head to the link in the description and check out Secret Lab today. Oh yeah, I didn't use the brush. Yo, that's it. That's all you need it for. You just gotta get in those cracks and crevices, brush off your keyboard, you know, I'll be, anyone's probably laughing at this right now, but honestly for any pet owners, um, or someone working in like a dusty environment. I don't know why it would be dusty, but maybe it is. This is great. I would absolutely just brush my keyboard down once a week or something if I had something like this. Uh, I was not kidding when I said I'm gonna try to steal it. Wow, look at that. It's see-through and you can just barely see the RGB lights on the back of this thing. Cool. Uh, on the front, it actually looks pretty good. I like the shine through on the sides and in between. These are not uh, double shot PBT, but uh, they are using like 100% PBT. So they feel pretty good. On oh, does it say double shot on them? The keycaps that we've got on the black one are double shot PBT. These are dye sublimated and it still looks pretty good. I actually really like the feeling of it, both the quality of the keycap material as well as the uh, KDA. Oh, I just realized KDA is like kill death's assist. Yeah, cool, all right, sweet. That doesn't really matter, but just neat. Um, I'm gonna type on it now, you know, as I like to do. I like, I do like this board. I don't know if I'd pay the price for it, but I like it a lot. Especially the camping motif and like the whole like green aesthetic that it's going for. I really dig it. Uh, okay, let's go. Oh, I screwed this up already. Okay, I'm keeping this one. I get one mulligan. Oh no, this is bad. 99, 95%. I screw it up a bunch of times. It's not the keyboard's fault. I actually really like it. I am a big fan, honestly. I still don't know what's up with this little area here. I'm not sure. 
It just looks, it's just aesthetic. I think it looks neat, even if it's not actually a speaker. I think it really fits this whole thing. I don't know if I want see-through. To be perfectly honest, I actually really do like the whole see-through thing, and I'm kind of upset that it doesn't happen more frequently, but I, I think with the solid green on the keycaps, I would actually prefer a solid green plastic shell for this thing. Otherwise though, it's great. I, I like the look of it, I like the feel, I like the typing experience. Um, it's pretty stiff and sturdy for plastic. So obviously, you know, you're not getting a CNC aluminum shell, which can contribute to a lot of the cost of a board. We're gonna take a look at the black one too, just to see if, you know, it's just the green that kind of has me turned off on the transparency or not. Actually, yeah, I, I honestly, it's just the fact that it's green, I, which is crazy because I like uh, colored like old gaming stuff too. Um, it's just the RGB is... Train! I absolutely do like the black one as transparent, maybe because it's a darker transparency, so you can still see through, but like, especially on the back here with all these lights lit up, that looks pretty cool. I don't know, the green, I just, I wish it was solid. I can't even really explain why. I would just, that's what I would prefer in this scenario. But yeah, the black one see-through looks great, feels great, super pretty. I'm going back to the green one though, because that's the one I want. It comes down to price. If you're not paying for CNC aluminum, then how much is molded plastic worth to you? This guy is $215 for the RGB version, and then if you want the unlit, non-RGB one, it's $195. So you can save a bit of money, but I mean, honestly, I think 20 bucks is worth the RGB. It's, it's good, and I like it, and I've paid about $200 for plastic boards. I'm pretty torn. I think that if you don't have anything yet and you need something wireless, like that's the big thing is I, I don't need wireless. I will almost never need wireless. That's just not me. I try to plug stuff in. And there's a big value in this board in the fact that it has a big battery and, and it's got wireless capabilities, both, both Bluetooth and uh, 2.4 gig. So I don't know. I, I don't think it's worth it to me personally. But I think if you're looking for a really cool looking board, something that looks kind of retro, uh, maybe something with the cool camping uh, keycaps, like these are sick. If you really want KDA, then maybe you're gonna have to get one of these. If they had a cheaper version that was only wired, I would probably jump on this thing, honestly, just to have it in my collection. That's the Iconix ZX75. If you want one, I mean, I hope they're still in stock. We're gonna have them linked below. It took forever for us to get ours, unfortunately. This is Short Circuit. If you wanna watch another Short Circuit, maybe check out the Cooler Master video. We got a Cooler Master board. It's got hot swap in it. How cool is that? It's pretty cool.